Just kidding. You gotta be able to land, man. Coach Massey here, CEO of M2 Speed, Strength, and Performance with another episode of Move Your Feet. Today we're back into the basics of ground reaction forces for training, episode number seven. And we've been having a pretty good run of these episodes and we're actually fresh off the Perform Better Summit in Orlando, Florida, where we had a great time, great group of folks. We had a lecture, and then we had a hands-on, and it was completely amazing. But one of the challenges we kept running across there, in addition to a couple of others, was um, landings. We were talking about landings a lot. We were trying to time ground contact time. People were having difficulty with that because they don't do that a lot. They don't record it a lot. And hopefully a couple of episodes down the road, uh, Coach Matt and I will get into that and show you how we do it. A real low-tech way to do it, but an effective way to do it. But landings, landings, landings it was a real big issue because people were talking about jumping and how to develop jumping mechanics, but we all came to the conclusion that a lot of people don't know how to land. And when you get people in, just don't assume that they know how to land. And why is that so important? Well, we've been talking about ground reaction force this entire series, and one of the things that we had talked about, one of the elements and components to consider in ground reaction force is the way ground reaction force dissipates. Well, first of all, it can dissipate in different ways across various surfaces, i.e., turf will have a ground reaction force dissipation rate that would be different than, let's say, rubber or hardwood floor. So if you're training a court sport athlete on the turf, you're going to have a little bit different affect between the two, and you should consider that. Now, if you train somebody on rubber who normally trains on turf, you're also going to have a little bit different affect because there's going to be different rates of dissipation. Now, I'm not saying it's not good to train on 5 millimeter or foam back turf, especially if you're going barefoot to develop the arches, but we do have to keep in mind there is going to be a different rate of dissipation on the different surfaces. Additionally, and more importantly than that, is there's going to be a dissipation of force or a translation of ground reaction force into, upon, across, and within the joints of the body. And if you're not landing correctly, something will eventually suffer. So right now I'm going to call Coach Matt in. And I'm going to say, Matt, your truest goal today is to keep me on track, okay? We just want to go over um, three simple drills, because I'll go off on a tangent, so keep me on track. So, Maddie is going to be our client or athlete today. And we were just talking about the importance of landings because, as we all know, people get injured on landing or on contact. Nobody really gets injured just kind of hanging around and up in the air in space. So before you can teach people to utilize, reappropriate ground reaction forces, you've got to teach them to land, especially when it comes to jumping. And even when it comes to sprinting, we're talking about foot strike, and we're talking about their sprint mechanics as a whole. But today, we're going to follow up because everybody's been texting us, emailing us, and saying, hey, can you follow up on X, Y, and Z? And one of the things or elements was the dissipation of force and, and the landings. So here we are. So let's assume that's not, from a zero to 10, you know, that's where your client rating is going to be from the time they come in. A zero, let's say, somebody who's never trained before. Let's assume Coach Matt comes in and, and he's a five. He's a, a, t a teen or high school athlete or a youth or high school athlete who's, you know, done a little bit of training on their own. Um, they, they play a sport, they practice, they definitely, they've jumped before, we know they've jumped before. So they, they understand uh, some of the semantics and, and they understand some of the terminologies. So the first drill that we do is like so stupid simple, and I'm sure we didn't invent it. Uh, and we call it HBT, TBH, or heel, ball, toe, toe, ball, heel. And we start to explain to the client, look, you have to be able to land well before you can jump well because that second movement is going to be something we want to look at. And they automatically, you know, say to us, well, if you're telling me to go heel, ball, toe, toe, ball, heel, you know, I'm hitting my heel, I'm not going to be able to get back up quick enough. We're going to address that in the next video. But anyway, 
So we put Maddie in the sad zone. We're going to say, you're going to set up your climber athlete very simply. You're going to say, listen, make like you're going to set up for a squat jump. And he knows that means arms back. It's going to get down, not too much anterior tilt. And he's not going to do this whole super presented chest thing because look what happens, right? So he's going to get good balance. He's going to sit there and I'm going to tell him, go heel ball toe, hold it. Whoops, he fell. And heel ball toe, hold it, three, two, one, toe ball heel. Once again, heel ball toe and toe ball heel. And rest. Now turn around and face the camera. Set up again. Good athletic power pillar, heel ball toe, and then toe ball heel. Good. Now, you might find that the first time somebody's going to fall because they really don't have their vertical line set. But what else is interesting is you'll find out with this that people really don't have the concentric, eccentric, and isometric control that you think they might have, no matter what level they're at. You can take a pro athlete and have them do this drill, and it can be really super frustrating. Diagnostically, in the sagittal, you're going to look for like too much anterior tilt. You're going to see where the hips are set back. Um, and in, in the frontal, we're going to be looking for things like valgus. We're going to look for any hip or ankle instability. And it's going to be kind of diagnostic. But that's the first super simple drill. It should correct within two, three minutes. It could be a part of your training periods, your training sessions. I suggest that you don't do anything else as far as jumping is concerned until there's a degree of mastery with that because you find that a lot of people will land on one leg or they'll land one leg dominant, looks bilateral but it's really not when they, after a jump. So get this correct, have them understand what it is to be equilaterally and bilaterally sound. So that's drill number one. So, drill number two, what can we do? Well, simple. We have a 12-inch box here because it's, it's small, it's low risk, and we feel like anybody can do it off a 12-inch, progress to an 18-inch, and so on and so forth. We call this our modified depth jump, or modified depth jump hold. We're not going to step off with one leg and drop into it. We're going to actually get the client or athlete to the edge of the box, and we're going to tell them to just jump out or drop off the box with good eccentric control and hold it at the bottom. Go ahead, man, show me. Well, good. Stay. Go back up, make the eccentric control portion a little longer, so take a little more time to kind of gradually get down into that, okay? Good. And even a little slow. Hop back up. So once you jump off, just make sure we get about a one, two, three, because you want to develop the hammocks. Your, your hamstrings are the hammocks of your leg, like if you're laying in a hammock. Go ahead. And down, and boom. That's really nice to develop, to help them to get that eccentric control, and help them fully appreciate not to rush, just yet, not to rush, until they understand what it is to go, what, what it is to go down to that heel. Now, I'm not saying you're spending a ton of time on the heel, so you can affirm that for me. It's just a matter of that soft heel strike that helps with that, that, that stiff loose, stiff loose that's required for real dynamic jumping. So now, we're gonna bring in the flexible barbell. Maddie, turn that frontal to them, just in case nobody's ever seen one of these before. So, you know, we, we use a lot of different training peripheral, peripherals, medicine balls, all sorts of plates, uh, in limited terms, the barbell. But this, this tsunami bar is really good for helping somebody to add resistance safely and really here work on eccentric and proprioceptive control when it comes to that exercise. Now, Matt, you just pull up on the center of the bar so you can see it flexes, right? So the angle of deflection being from the midpoint to the ends. And if Maddie's rolling about, he said he woke at 176 today. Let's just say he's rolling at about 180. You're gonna put kind of 30% of the weight on there, six times three. So Let's say we would normally put about 30 pounds onto this bar because of the way it flexes. You get the angle of deflection, oscillation, and amplitude. So we have 25 pounds per side. The bar itself is about five pounds. That lands us at just about 30 pounds, which should be just challenging enough, but actually encouraging enough for him to do that drill and do really well at it. So Manny, hop up on there. He's just gonna back load this. We recommend a more of a low trap load on it 
and you have to instruct your client or athlete when they get up on the box to find a comfortable position with their hands and you don't want them having the bar hop off their back, so you're gonna tell them make sure you're pulling down on the bar. He's just gonna execute that modified depth jump with the central control. Hit it. Good. Now, as you see, you'll see someone who's kind of a novice at that will have more shuddering and stuttering taking place. Manny's pretty good at this, and believe it or not, this weight can be very, very challenging. Now, Matt, turn frontal towards the camera. I'm gonna swing this box around behind you so they can get a look here, too, how simple it is. All right, but you step back up on that. I'll spot it for you for a minute. Good, then you hold it. As you can see, set up. He has hand placement a little further out. He's pulling a bar down on him, and I'm gonna spot the box while he jumps forward, and he does that one more time. You guys take a look. Hips, knees, ankles, and see if he has too much anterior tilt. Go ahead, bud. Good, very nice, good control, pop it up. So that's a short video. This coach man goes racing back off frame. That's a short video today. You gotta be able to land. Is that tedious? Yeah, but develop, developing people in the correct manner can be laborious. It's fun, but it can be laborious. So, until next time, Coach Massey here from M2 Speed, Strength, and Performance. Remember, the greatness is forged, not fabricated, and that's your day.